Hello coders and welcome. My name is Darren and today I will be kicking off this tutorial series which will focus on bringing you from zero knowledge in C-sharp to being well on your way to coding up your own projects in no time. This tutorial series is for beginners, so if you have sufficient knowledge in other languages, this may not be the most informative video for you. So let's get started. Why use C-sharp? Well, for starters, it is regularly in the top five of most popular programming languages in the tech industry. It is a high-level language, making it easy to learn, and, is, and it is object-oriented, which makes it a great tool for game development. On a side note, we have a tutorial series specifically for game development on our channel, so if it piques your interest, go ahead and visit that. c -sharp is also a great tool for building GUI-based or web applications. In this tutorial series, you may find me using games to illustrate programming concepts. Well, this is mostly because the majority of us have probably played games, so it's easier for everyone to relate. Otherwise, I would use the common phone number or social security database examples, which tend to be a little bit on the boring side. I'm going to be using Visual Studio because it is argu arguably the best IDE out there for coding in. I strongly recommend downloading it if you have not already. Uh, I believe there is a free download available, so I'll go ahead and post a link to that in the description. Let's go ahead and create a new project now. To do this, just click Create New Project, select C Sharp on the left, then select Console Application on the right side, come down, type a name for your project, and finally, tell Visual Studio where you want your project to be saved. I have already created a project, so I will go ahead and just open it for my previously created projects. Don't worry too much about all of the windows in the IDE right now. Just know that on the left is your Solution Explorer, where you will have all of your directories and code files for your project. If you do not have a Solution Explorer, come up to the View button on your toolbar and select Solution Explorer. Now let's go into our program.cs file. Do not be overwhelmed, I will explain everything that is going on here. Let's start at the namespace. I will come back to using statements in just a moment. So here we have namespace introduction. The best way to think about namespaces is as folders. Everything within the folder is what we care about, and sometimes we want the content that is in other folders or namespaces. Keep that in mind for later. Note that our namespaces encapsulate everything under it. How do I know this? Well, look at the curly braces. These braces are vital to your code structure. In Visual Studio, they automatically place your curly braces where they need to go. If I delete these last few curly braces and type new ones, you will see this in action. For now, just think that each block of code should have curly braces around it, though this is not always true. Look at class program. This also has curly braces around it. Everything within its curly braces belongs to class program. Static void main is a block of code that is going to handle running our program. Everything within its curly braces is where the actual program will get its information. Let's run our program. Right now, it opens and closes because we are not telling static void main to keep the program running. Let's make a minor adjustment. I'm going to write some code that will keep the program up. Never mind how it works for now, this is just to prove that we can keep the program, program open long enough to see that nothing is really happening. Let's talk about what data types and variables are now. In the case of the code I just wrote, bool is a data type and running is a variable. As you probably know, variables are able to hold various information. Which type of information is based on the data type associated with it? In the case of our bool, our variable can hold either true or false. The while running statement simply tells the program to run while our variable running is true. Let's test this. Set running to false and run the program to see what happens. So what other information can we hold within our variables? Let's say we were making a game and we wanted to keep track of a player's health. Which data type could we use? Let's look at a data type called int. int is short for integer and it is a data type that can hold any whole number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. This makes it an ideal data type for a player's health. Well, what if we wanted to give the player a run speed? Would you use an int data type? Well, we certainly could and everything would probably be fine. But as you will come to find, we often want more control than what an int has to offer. What I'm talking about is decimal values. To store decimal values with up to six places of precision, we can use the float data type. This might be more ideal for tweaking our player's run speed. 
If we assign a value to our variable type float, we have to signify that it is a float by adding the f after the value. Otherwise, the compiler thinks it is a type double, which has 14 places of decimal precision. These are the most common data types you will be using at first. However, as the series progresses, you will be introduced to a few other important data types. Now that we have a base understanding of what data types are, let's revert our attention back to these using statements. What do they do? Well, let's just think of them as doors into other namespaces. Remember how namespaces are just like folders to other code? So these using statements give us access to code that has already been written for us. Let's see if we can prove this. Since we know what data types are, we will see that some more complicated data types will no longer be available to use without using some of these using statements. Let's talk about the list data type really briefly. Lists can be used to define variables that hold collections of information. This can be a collection of integer values, float values, bool values, etc. Where does this mysterious list data type come from? We can find out by removing the using system.collections.generic line of code. Now if we try to use the list data type, the compiler gets all fussy because it doesn't know what list is. Alright guys, this concludes our introduction to C Sharp. I know we just went over a lot in only a few minutes, but hopefully it was mostly painless. If you guys are confused about anything or would like greater detail in a particular section discussed today, please leave comments in the comment section below. And if it's simple, I'll just reply in the comment section. If it's a little bit uh, more detailed that you guys want, I'll probably just make a new video. Um, look forward to the C Sharp video next week where I'm going to talk about the all powerful if statement. Very important stuff in C Sharp or really any programming languages that use if statements. Um, also, if any of you are interested in making games, go ahead and go to our channel. Check out our Unity 3D tutorials. There's a lot of information packed in to uh, some short videos, so go ahead and check that out. Um, but other than that, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Please subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.